Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. There have been strident calls by the leaders of the ANC Youth League and the Young Communist League for the nationalization of mines in South Africa as a way of protecting jobs in the midst of the economic recession. However, the country's Mineral Resources Minister Susan Shibangu stated that the government definitely won't nationalize mines, calling the topic a non-issue. Mining Weekly editor Martin Kremer is with me in the studio today to give us an update on the story so far. Welcome to the show, Martin. Hi, Shannon. What will it mean for South Africa if our mines are nationalized, especially in terms of investor relations? We just need to go back a, a few steps. <coughs> Since the ANC Polokwane conference, uh, there have been calls for nationalization of the mines. And it hasn't only come at the level of, of the, the youth and uh, ANC Youth League and the Young Communists. It's also been at National Union of Mine Worker level and not in the lower echelons, but right from the top, you know, from the president's speak. And uh, he, he, at a conference uh, last year, he addressed government and he addressed business. And he said, I've just come back from Norway. I've seen the Norwegian model. It impresses me. That's a nationalization model, but it's a model where the state keeps 60% and uh, they still manage to attract investors in who take 40% and the way they use their funds is exemplary. Their, their roads are fantastic, their schools are impressive and he said uh, you come away there thinking well why can't South Africa do something like this? But of course South Africa comes out of a different history. It comes out of an entrepreneurial history. The mining industry has been built on entrepreneurs. In fact, <coughs> you know, the, the, um, the mineral rights in South Africa used to be in private hands until the democracy in 1994. And many people interpret the Freedom Charter of 1955, where they said the mineral rights should belong to the people, as already having been enacted. Because when the ANC came in, they changed the legislation and they brought it into line with Australia and they brought it into line with Canada, where private mining companies were not allowed to control the mineral rights, that those had to vest with the state. And that has already happened. So many believe the nationalization that was asked for by the Freedom Charter in 1955 had already been complied with. But now, <coughs> what Julius Malema of uh, the ANC um, youth uh, organization and um, the young communists are calling for is going beyond that. They don't only want to own the mineral rights or the state to own the mineral rights and people to apply for those rights. They say we want to own the means of production as well. We want to own everything on the surface. And if you speak to the young communists, they say it's not for ideological reasons, but for the brutal manner in which these assets were taken from us. So there's that sort of uh, hostility building up and also a lot of attention grabbing because uh, in making these radical statements, youth attract a lot of attention to themselves mm -hmm. and they seem to revel in that. So what then is the ruling party's stance on mine nationalization? Is it debatable or is it a non-issue like the minister stated? Well, one spokesman, uh, Jesse Duarte, says it is still debatable, still mm -hmm. open to debate. The Secretary General of the ANC said it's not on the agenda. The new Minister of Mines, Susan Chibangu, says it's a non-issue and that uh, we're not going to nationalize the mines. And the Chamber of Mines says, we don't listen to the youth wings, we only listen to what the government says. And from what our point of view, uh, there is no nationalization on the agenda. Now, some mine trade unions seem unaware of state-owned mine companies. What's the story there? Well, it was interesting when the National Union of Mine Workers Secretary General Franz Bellini mm -hmm. was questioned this week on the whole issue of nationalization of mines. He said, provided there was a willing, a willing seller, willing buyer situation, he found nothing wrong with uh, the whole concept of, of uh, nationalization. And he felt the South African government should buy up mine stressed assets cheaply and then recapitalize these in order to create revenue streams and, and jobs. And he felt that would be in order. But <coughs> he didn't mention 
the fact that after Polokwane, the state actually created a new state-owned mining company. And that is actually active <laughs> as we speak. And Siswi Madondo is the CEO, and he was quite bemused because <laughs> he said, you know, don't they even know that we're here? Mm. And he is planning to create the first state-owned coal mine from scratch by the end of next year. But he's going through a different model. He does not believe in the acquisition model. He believes in applying for the mineral rights like everyone else. And he says there are a lot of state-owned mineral rights around that still are prospective going through the motions of all the law, the environmental, and then actually doing a, a special study to find out whether this is bankable, as they call, and if the, it is, then going ahead and creating mines. So it's a very different model, which he says he favors that, because he said, where are you going to get the cash to acquire these capital-hungry mines? Which leads me to the next question. What are some of the challenges that our state-owned mining companies would, would face? Well, you know, capital is the big one at the moment. Uh, you know, anyone who makes a statement to the media who's in mining at the moment, one of the first things they tell you about is their balance sheet. Mm. <laughs> because if their balance sheet is stressed, they're almost dead, at the dead in the water at the moment. And so we know that um, funds are not in abundance at the moment. And so that would be the huge uh, initial challenge that I don't think we should, should even go beyond because if you haven't got the cash, uh, you, you cannot capitalize these mines and they require a lot of capital. Thank you so much for your time, Martin. It's a great pleasure, Shannon. That's the show for today. Join us again next time as we take an in-depth look at the mining world's premier projects, industries and business personalities. <laughs>